record. So Nancy, we are we are here. We we've connected a half hour. It's almost like we're Newfoundland time, right? That's right, exactly. Newfoundland time. I wonder how they're doing. Yeah. Well, I I actually read something uh, unfortunate in the news that there's a prediction of a of a of a food sort shortage in Newfoundland, and I I need to go deeper into it. But like any of those island communities where they rely on logistics and uh, shipping, you know, uh, to That's get things. True. Yeah, like. Um, Years ago, I used to work on a sailboat that shipped food and uh, supplies to different islands that were hard to get to. And without those weekly, you know, the weekly deliveries, people wouldn't, the grocery stores wouldn't get uh, stocked. You know, like we're so blessed to live in a place like where we do, where at least we've got access to supply chain still, you know. Well, and we can forage for fun. We don't have to actually go out and do our own hunting, if you will. (laughs) <laughs> We're probably a few generations shy of that in, uh, at this point. Yeah, I'm yeah. ready to start foraging, Nancy. So, Nancy, how are you doing first uh, on a personal level? How, how are you getting through all this? Well, it's been interesting because, you know, when you look at your businesses every day, when they thrive, you thrive. And when they're not, you're down. You're, you're, feeling, you're feeling their pains right alongside of them. You know, over the last five plus years I've been here, I've watched – the trailblazers in our uptown open and go scratch my head and go really are we going to do this and they do it and how successful and the people that come out and support them so yeah it's been a bit of a roller coaster to say the least greg mm. and have you i mean you none of us have seen anything like this before but you came from uh a, a, you know doing a similar role in halifax uh many uh years ago but uh what, what are some other challenges that you've been through in representing and supporting small businesses that have, you know, any sort of comparison to this? I know that there probably isn't, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I really, I really don't think I can recall through, I mean, you know, you go back to 2006, I started with the Halifax Regional Municipality when they put a file on my desk and said, here's the bid file. And I went, bid, so what are we bidding on? And it was for business improvement districts <laughs> and did for, for uh, and, and, and it was in a support role as a liaise, as a bureaucrat to, to the small business community and, you know, writing policies and things like that to going over to Spring Garden Road where I said, you know, I'd never do that job. Those people are absolutely crazy. And then I did it. And I guess I proved I'm crazy. I got to come home and do it now in my own hometown. And no, never have I ever seen uh, anything uh, like this. I don't think any of us have, to be honest with you. But what I have still seen is the spirit of mankind coming forward and us still, and look, anybody who knows me who's ever been in a business meeting with me, no matter how serious it is, I've got to bring the funny out. I've got to bring out the humor in it because it keeps us real. Because we Amen. are, right? We're small, we're, we're all cogs in the wheel, but let's keep it real. And uh, while we're, I think I just woke up from the dream, maybe I wake up from it and I go back to sleep and I go, I wake up and I, is it over yet? <laughs> Yeah, 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 totally. And uh, you know, th- there is something to be said about respectfully using humor. Like humor is so critical, you know. And <clears throat> sometimes I find my humor might, might might be close to the line of uh, maybe inappropriate. Like, for example, that amazing cooler that is continuously stocked with Corona beer that I have out on my um, on my front deck right now. And you know, the big joke is the only case of Corona on my street is on my front deck in the cooler. Um, but uh, you know, you, you gotta you gotta you gotta keep it light as much as you can, and uh, and at the same time, really understand what people are going through. And uh, you know, there's so many people that are negatively impacted by this. Uh, uh, you know, just think about all the vulnerable people that live in our city and uh, who are even in the best of times incredibly vulnerable. Um, and then I, I think about all of these small business owners uptown that you represent that, you know, some uh, are probably not going to get through this. Um, others have found innovative ways to do it, just depending on what their, what their business is, you know, like uh, it's a strange time where certain types of businesses are just going to have it harder than other, others, you know. And, it's not going to come back online. You know, we're part of a larger group as business improvement associations. They started in 1976 on Young and Bloor. And, you know, as you know, it's private money. So the property owners, 
um, have decided at one point in time to host a club, have a club a site and say, yes, we'd like to have an association that would represent us. And our legislation shows that we have to do advocacy, beautification, clean and safe streets, marketing and promotion and urban design. And all of a sudden you look at all those pillars and you go, which which one are we? What are we today? And I'm really following the businesses and, and listening. So we have a larger body, the International Downtown Association of Canada, that are our heavyweights that are writing the letters to our PM to say, listen, these are the real issues right now. Uh, just got off a call. Peter Stoddard was on it. He was talking about it's rent. How are we paying our rent? We have all this overhead. Um, we're seeing the takeout still working, but they have 100% overhead, only bringing in 30% of their revenue. How can we sustain that? And you know, we're loyal. We're loyal to our our um, small businesses. I see a lot of people rising up and, and proudly saying how they have shopped online if they can or how they've gone to take out. But you're right, the, the reality is we keep going in months and months, it's not sustainable and there will be business lost in our uptown. Um, the projection is from a lot of the uptown, uptowns and downtowns, we're unique, we're in uptown. A lot of the downtowns in Canada are talking 30% of our small business will be lost during this event. And it takes a long time to get that back. Oh my gosh. Well, just think about the momentum. I mean, I was going through our uh, video archives and uh, going all the way back to 2002 and uh, some ridiculous videos that we made uh, with Enterprise St. John at the time and, and others. And we were just, we we're touting the same message, you know, like, look at the assets we have. Um, and at the time, we, we did have a lot of really cool things, but nothing compared to what, what it is, well, five weeks ago, you know. Um, and uh, it's just been neat to see what in the last 15, 16 years, what has happened in the uptown and just the incredible uh, revitalization. And um, I wonder if, if we hit a tipping point, though, where we just started to see a lot of people buying uptown and I'm, I'm noticing a lot of uh, a lot of folks who their kids are out of out of the, out of the house now and uh, you know uh, there's a generation of people who are who are buying uptown now and now that there's more people that have decided to renovate their buildings and and move themselves up mm. they expect to have you know thriving restaurants and thriving bars and retail and whatnot I, I'm just being hopeful here. I, I just wonder if there's, if, if there's enough of a movement there to, uh, to really help this thing rebound once we get out of it. I'm, I'm in that same hope box that you are, that uh, with the 15% from the 2000, uh, I think it was six census, another one's coming out, with the 15% densification growth in the uptown, you're right. So you're seeing, I call them young hipsters, and then we have the baby boomers. And I mean, I absolutely love living uptown. I literally am two blocks away from work. Um, so I actually head down to the office every once in a while to have that feeling again that I'm working. Um, and you're right, you're seeing the disposable income. But what's interesting about this, Greg, is that you see those two groups together out. It's yeah. interesting when you go to Picaroons, which I call the boardroom across the street from our office, is they're all together. So, you know, we're, we, are, we have a great togetherness. Oh, I just saw a baby in the back. I see a baby. Oh, and so she sweet. Thinks that after she gets changed, I'll, I'll, I'll pop her in so you can see her. How sweet is that? Yes. And then people are having babies in the midst of this. But you're right. I think that um, that may actually ignite some people to say, you know what? There's a lot of changes, a lot of perspective going on in our individual lives about could have, would have, should have. Mm -hmm. And maybe because we don't have this control, we, well, we know we don't have this control over it, the, the world as it is today, that we might start to go, you know what, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna buy that, I'm gonna go here, or I'm gonna do this, and I'm going to not, I'm not gonna overanalyze it anymore. We've been wanting to move uptown, so let's get uptown. And it's, uptown's not for everyone, let's just face it. I mean, obviously, there's certain times in your life that you wanna be near the rinks, and you wanna be near the soccer fields for your children. But for those who can come up, and of course we love those with the disposable income that want to eat out. I mean, our restaurants, um, people from Fredericton, people from Moncton, Sussex, Sormondo. Oh, so I mean, they nice. drive in for our, they drive in for our, you know, I'm talking to Peter today and it's like, he's so tired of getting stuff out of his freezer to eat. He's like, I just want to go out and eat, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say how, how how refreshing because back when we were making those earlier videos, way way back, um, St. John really suffered the whole. Oh, this, that's a stinky town. There's nothing going on there. <laughs> People from our other uh, cities in the province would just say, "What? Why do you want to live in St. John? Why would you go there?" And it's so fun now to hear so many people say, well, you guys have it going on there for restaurants and, and uptown retail and, you know. They, well, and culturally, I mean, you know, it's our people in and of themselves that it's the groups that get together and say, hey, let's put a moon in the air and watch people come. I mean, hello, right? Like it's, it's the cultural feeling experience. Um, and you can't really... Put, you can put that in an ad, but you really need to just come out and, and be part of it. And once you are, then you spread the word. And that's where our marketing is. I mean, that's yeah. what happens. It's word of mouth, right? People are saying, geez, here we are. Uh, we just experienced and it. Was, there, there were some vendors. And uh, oh, yeah, and there was a moon. Oh, and there's a baby. Oh, my. Oh, she's smiling, Greg. Baby will always uh, interrupt happily. Oh, isn't she darling? Yeah, no. Babies are good. See the joy, the bundle, and she won't have a clue what happened and carry oh, no. on. She's a COVID baby. So they won't know the difference, but the, she'll won't. be a future uptown supporter. How's that? Yeah, you're all caught up. I'm all caught up. Thanks, hon. Um, you know, I wanted to tell you a little bit about that whole marketing piece, which is very interesting. Uptown St. John did not deliberately go out and do a marketing campaign around COVID. We, we actually, what's very interesting is we wanted to just, I just woke up and said, how are we going to just share this love? And as you know, the heart, and I, I know your daughter, the heart, and everyone sort of relates to the, the big red heart. And so that's in our current brand. And I said, well, let's make it more inclusive. And let's just say, you know, I heart my St. John and let's just post it up and put it up King Street. And again, normally you're supposed to get permission, but I try to do the whole let's ask for forgiveness piece. So we put it up there. And somebody was walking by, they'd been at the market and they said, hey, do you have that in digital? And I'm like, well, what, what do you mean digital? What do you mean? <laughs> I can give it to you, sure. No, but I want to put it on my Facebook page, on my profile. And I went, well, sure. So I called up our, go our gal that does it. She said, yeah, give me 15 minutes. And so I got it. And then I decided to throw it out to my contacts and it blew up. Absolutely. Everyone was sort of just looking for that connection. And all of a sudden you could see it just going like wildfire on face on Facebook. And so since then we sort of just played off of it. So nothing and deliberate. It was just, and that's the part I love about our town. That's the brilliance of it. It's like, there's not too much thought. It was more of a feeling, right? It was like, this yeah. is a good idea. I should, I should push this out. And everybody jumped on that. You know, that, that's, that's, that's the way it should be, Nancy. It's a lot of fun. Um, I visited the restaurants and said, well, hey, let's take this one step further and make a label. And when you're sending that out, and we just added one little tagline to say, hey, we're thankful that you're supporting local. So we threw that on there. I passed those around. I went through 5,000 on Thursday. I'm getting calls today. We need more. So again, it's probably more about it's it, again you don't think about doing a, a huge marketing strategy in the midst of this other than you know you're trying to to create continue to support local which i know a lot of us do but um i think the other piece is is it's just happening organically and that's when it will work and that's when it will stick and there's no there's nobody pushing behind another agenda it's just people rising up and that's yeah. that's what's warming my heart and it's got me a little bit a little bit more positive today plus the sun is shining today so uh, it's kind of hard to not be positive when it's a day like this i already went with the with Kaya for a, a 10 and a half kilometer bike ride today. Uh, wow. Nice out, you know, and you know what? It was, this is not necessarily a good thing, but it was good for biking with a kid. Maybe over an hour of, of biking, we maybe saw six cars today. And we're out like all through Milledgeville. So it's, it's weird. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's kind of the safest time to, to get out there and, 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 you know, safely and stay away from people. All that sort of thing. Um, so Nancy, to cha change the gears, um, I've done a lot of these daily conversations with people that are in my orbit. And um, I don't know how long I'll do them. Probably this week uh, will be it, maybe. I'm not too sure. But I've been trying to share videos on these streams. But the way that Zoom works and Facebook streams, it's just really choppy. Um, 
so it's not that great. But what we'll do is uh, I want to show, let's show that, uh, well, we can show both the videos if you want. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So right now, and if it looks choppy, people, we will uh, be posting them underneath here anyway, like the actual videos. So um, Nancy, what do you want to say about the videos that we're going to hopefully share here in a sec? Uh, you know, our restaurant and retail sector, uh, and, and there's many of our sectors that we represent, but these are the, these are the people that are actually keeping uh, the joy in our lives, if you will. <laughs> so we, we, I reached out to Hemmings House, uh, because you're in the VIA, business in the VIA, so support you folks, and, and to really let people know that, you know, we're still, we're still operating the best that we can. And I love that the businesses, when we put this out, the response back was, hey, we haven't gone anywhere. We didn't lock up our office and went home. They are like, okay, they're still listening. Yeah. 100%. Okay, so let's, um, which, which one do you want to see first, retail or food? Oh, my goodness. Let's do, uh, let's do the retail first. Okay, here we go. And let's see if this, do you see this full screen? Yeah, it's great. Right, here we go. Uptown retailers are working hard to offer their boutique and quality products differently. During this challenging time, you can continue to buy local. Visit UptownSJ.com to find out what businesses are still offering goods in a safe way. We're all in this together. And what a voice. What a voice. I, love. I just love, I, I, I love how it came together. You guys were so quick. I was like, what do you mean you've got your first drop done? I was like, and I know you're working hard. You've got other clients out there that you're, they're tapping into you guys right now. I was so Working hard or hardly working, Nancy, one or the other. Yeah, well, I know it's a really weird thing, right? I mean, sometimes you're working at seven, which normally I wouldn't be, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. so the, the next one, um, let's see here, is the one that features and celebrates our Roar Restaurant Chefy people. So let's uh, let's see how this goes, and hopefully this is full screen for you. Um, yeah. All good. From chefs to baristas, our friends are hard at work, offering delivery and takeout. During this challenging time, you can still keep St. John cooking. Visit UptownSJ.com to find out what businesses are still offering goods in a safe way. We're all in this together. Amen. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah. here, here's like technically what I, what I was excited about these videos is uh, you voiced it into your, I, I'm guessing you've got an iPhone or do you have an iPhone or an Android? Oh, phone? I have an Android. Yeah, I voiced okay. it. So you voiced it into your smartphone. Yeah. Uh, this microphone here, this is an $800 microphone. You don't need that. I'm just saying that because it's like, yeah, we, we, we buy all this fancy equipment at Hemming's house uh, and then we just proved ourselves that we don't need any of this stuff. So uh, we got you to voice it from home. So you didn't have to come into our studio. We we're able to get images from Instagram and submitted. And uh, uh, for us as Hemming's house is innovating, this is what we're trying to figure out. How do we keep telling stories without sending camera crews in right now, you know, and, and it's infinitely possible. <laughs> prime, prime example and and i must say rather quickly i mean there wasn't any changes it came by it came out and i was like yeah i love it no great <laughs> we love clients like you Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm usually pretty picky like i'm like okay but what about this or what about that i didn't really have a vision i just said i'm just going to leave it to the professionals and they're going to tell me what to do and i love the fact that the team actually contacted they went out and and reached into uh, uh knocked on all the doors and called everybody and they're pretty excited. So yeah. uh, well, it's a little bit that helps, right? Yeah, thank, and you helped us by uh, including us in that project. Thank you so much. And uh, for everybody watching, uh, especially the St. Johners, uh, please go visit that, um, that website. And Nancy, just not to embarrass me, what is it, the website again? It's the... Oh, uh, uptownsj.com. Uptownsj.com. Oh, okay. I thought it was... Uh, we're, did we're I get that right? Did I even say it's at stjohn.com? I'm going by website and I'm going by... Figure it out. Uh, Google us. We're at the top. We have optimized our website. Nice. And we will uh, we'll definitely be posting these both these videos uh, on our channels as well. And, uh, good well thank you for all that you do Nancy. you're awesome you. and, um we're looking forward to getting back to normal and drinking a pipe at uh pick with you 
at your board uh, boardroom across the street. At my boardroom, yeah, <laughs> great. Thank you, Greg, and, and to the team at Hemings House, we appreciate all your work and, and your support, and we love that you're uptown. Thank you, Nancy. Let's do, talk to you later. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.